hey guys the social fashion here back with another tutorial in this video i want to show you guys how to do a corset cup caging this is a continuation of the video i uploaded last week on how to draft a corset with a queen and neckline any of my corset video will be fine for this so i have the corset cup here already and I've gone ahead to iron SDA to the corset cup. This is very important. The materials that are going to be needing for this is Regeline Bonin. Guess the one that is not up to half of an inch. It's usually very flexible compared to the one that is half an inch wide. Then I'm also going to be needing SDA, but I forgot to show you guys the SDA at the beginning of this video, but just keep that in mind. So the first thing I'm going to do is to cut out the peplum stay. So I'm going to place my corset cup and cut the peplum stay out to be exactly the same as the peplum stay. No addition, no subtraction. So I'll cut it out and iron it, making sure that it's the shining side that is facing the wrong side of the corset cup. And if it is not gluing properly, you can also use hemming gum to fuse the peplum stay to the corset cup. So I'll go ahead and cut this out and iron it and show you guys what to do next. So guys, this is what the cup is looking like. I've gone ahead to iron the peplum stay to it and you can see that it is now very stiff. So what I'm going to do next is to join the cups together with the seam allowance which I have already added. Please note that half of an inch seam allowance has been added to this pattern all round. Okay, seam allowance has been added to it already. So please make sure you add your seam allowance so you won't end up with a smaller cup when you're done. So I'm just joining this using half of an inch. So I'll join the both of the cups together and then we'll move on to the next step, which is ironing. spread open and this is what it is looking like after i have ironed the cup so the next thing to do now is to create the corset cup caging lines okay so go ahead and grab your pencil for this or grab a chalk but i prefer to use a pencil for this so that i'll be able to get something more accurate and i will have a very thick line the first thing you need to do before drawing out the lines is to first of all trace out the seam allowance of half of an inch all round. 
So in that I think that I've already added the same allowance of half of an inch all around the cup. So that's what I'm marking out. It's important to do this. It's a very crucial step. So that when you are attaching the original line boning to the corset cup, it will not exceed past the seam allowance and you'll be able to join the cup properly. The next thing to do is to draw out the line since the cage has been drawn out. The first line has to pass through this center point of the cup. It's very important. The draining of the corset or a bustier, a ridge line boning must pass through it so that it can bring out the natural curve of the corset cup. Now, note that if you do not draft the corset cup properly, the boning is going to highlight it because it's basically just adding structure to the curve that is already there. So that is the first line that's going to be drawn. So for this second line, I'm going to divide this top part into two from the midpoint. You can see the way I placed my tape, making sure it does not exceed past the half of an inch seam allowance. So when I have to mark that out, then I'll come and mark this other side. Divide it into two and mark the points. Okay, so after doing that, the next thing to do is to draw out the curve. And for this, you don't necessarily need to mark out the midpoint of the middle part or the bottom part of the crossing curve. Is the upper part that matters? Okay, that's why I did not show you guys when I did that because if you try to divide it into two, you might not get an accurate line for the corset cup caging you have to make sure that the line that you are drawing follows the shape of the cup don't just draw a straight line it has to be slightly curved and following the way the corset cup is curved okay so that is what i am doing just pay attention to the way i'm drawing mine as you can see i had to tip the corset cup over to be able to get this other line curved right so this is what you want yours to be looking like the next line that has to come has to meet this center point here okay so the sharpest part of the curve has to have a line going past it so that's going to be the first line i will draw out and after drawing out the line i'll go ahead and draw out the rest so the two most important line for this corset cup caging is the one that passes through the middle vertically and horizontally so make sure that you get that right once you get that right the structure of the cup is going to be firm and it will stand out well so i'm just going to draw another line at the top and at the bottom just making sure that there is equal space between each of the lines you can see that i'm not really measuring this i'm just like eyeballing the process so just pay attention to the way i'm doing it you can definitely add more but this is the standard this is like the best way to you can see that the lines are slightly curved they are not just straight see how this one follows the corset cup and how the other one also follows the corset cup so this is what you want yours to look like the next thing to do is to attach the ranging line boning to all of the lines already drawn out i like to pass the first boning through the middle points of the corset cup and you have to make sure that when you are joining this it does not pass the seam allowance okay so i'm going to take you guys now to the sewing machine and show you how to attach it this is the corset cup for the both of them already drawn out so i did the other one off camera now let's go ahead to the next phase which is attaching the ridge line boning to it remember i said that the ridge line boning you're using has to be the slimmer one here i'm showing you guys the difference between the two of them you can see that this one towards the right is half an inch wide and the other one is slimmer if i place this one on top of the other one you can see that there is a space between them so make sure that the one that you are using is the slim type so join those together you're going to place the ridge line boning through the middle of the corset cup and you won't be sewing down the middle of the boning you're going to be stitching one side down first 
making sure that this is stretched out and the fabric is not folding under when you are sewing it and also remember i said the range line boning must not exceed the seam allowance which is why it was drawn out so you won't sew over it so here i'm making sure that the corset cup around that curvy area is stretched out so it doesn't wrinkle while stitching it's very important that this is well stretched out and i'm just sewing on the edge of the boning not the middle because we're actually going to go ahead and sew the other edge this part is going to be slightly difficult to sew because we have to make sure that that curvy area is stretched out and is not wrinkled so you can see that i'm really taking my time here even though the video is a bit sped up i'm just making sure that i stitch this first part down because once you're able to stitch down one part of the boning sewing the other end is usually very easy so once i'm getting towards the end of the cup i'll cut off the original boning to stop exactly at the seam allowance line and then sew off the edge after doing that i'll go ahead and sew the other edge down making sure that i'm sewing very very close to the edge of the boning like i said earlier this other part is not difficult to sew once you have done the first part the other side will be easy you can see that i did this one in one smooth stitch no stress whatsoever so i'm done with this one i'm going to go ahead and cut off the excess thread so that this one up here rough this is what it is looking like you can see that i've highlighted the curve i said it earlier that if you don't do the right curve that is what is going to be highlighted so make sure that you draft your pattern right okay so the next one i'm going to do will pass through the center horizontally remember i said that these two lines are the most important for giving the corset cup structure once you get this two right attaching the rest of the boning will be easy because the rest is just like for additional structure but these two main ones is what will form the right shape okay so i'm just stitching down one edge like i did for the first one making sure that i do not exceed the seam allowance and after stitching down the first edge i'll go ahead and stitch down the other edge of the boning So this is what it is looking like after i'm done sewing it you can see that it has a lot of structure it's very firm so what i'm going to do is sew the rest of the boning down off camera i'm just going to sew the one that's going to be going horizontally and vertically on the corset cup so all of these lines these remaining four lines i'll go ahead and stitch boning to it off camera and then show you guys what to do next over here i'm just showing you guys that i've done the first two lines so i'm going to do the other two lines that goes horizontally off camera and it's very important to attach this side properly making sure that you are stretching out the corset cup if not it can make the corset cup shrink and look smaller and you do not want that so make sure that you are stretching out when attaching the boning for these two sides i'm going to go ahead and do this off camera like i said earlier okay and this is what it is looking like after i have attached all of the boning to it you can see it's already having that corset cup cajun the next thing to do is to add boning all around the corset cup okay so this is going to be all the way around the sides and the top as well but i'm going to start with attaching to the sides so when you're sewing this one down you have to make sure that the boning is right beside the seam allowance it must not pass the seam allowance that is one constant rule okay so here i'm just sewing it down at the first edge so this is just right beside the seam allowance i have marked down this is also going to be very very tricky it's going to be very hard so make sure that you take your time with this because you have to make sure that the boning is curved and is not losing its shape when you are stitching it down to the corset cup. The video looks sped up, that's why it looks like it is easy, but trust me, this actually took time for me to do. So this is why it's important to use the flexible boning. Make sure you get the slimmest one. 
which I believe they are about three sizes the half inch one there's one that is almost half an inch and one that is slightly smaller okay so the other two is fine but the one that is half an inch wide is not advisable so guys I'll go ahead and stitch red line boning all round on one edge first there's going to be the edge that is right beside the seam allowance just pay attention to what I'm doing on the screen that will help you understand better okay so i'm just going to take this round the sides and the under part of the cup and stop here you can see that this didn't pass the same allowance then i'll go ahead and stitch this down again at the other edge this other side is usually very easy to do once you have stitched down the first side the other side will be easy to sew so you can see that i just easily breezed through it's just this curvy part that you have to press down with your hands okay so that it doesn't shift and it doesn't look weird after after sewing down the sides i'll go ahead and stitch the upper part okay so i'll just place the boning making sure it's just beside the seam allowance so this way I'm actually tucking in all of the bonings that I attached before. The one I am putting all around the cup, we just seal off all of the edges. After sewing the final parts of this cup caging, this is what it is looking like. You can see it's looking very neat and fine. Just have to cut off the excess thread so you don't have thread hanging around. So this is what gives it that basket effect when you sew the both sides of the boning and not just the center line okay that doesn't give a neat or professional look so i've gone ahead to sew down the boning for both cups i did the other cup off camera and the next thing to do now is to iron estate the corset cup so the reason for ironing estate on the corset cup is to cover up the boning okay is to just cover up the boning to give it a more finished look and also make the bust area a bit full so the amount of layers of s they are going to put depends on how thick you want the cup to be okay so but i recommend a minimum of three layers if you want to do this so what i'm doing here is to just measure out how much i need and to do that i just placed s day on top of the corset cup then i'll cut that out and cut this out in as many layers as i want for the purpose of this tutorial i used four layers of sd so the amount of sd you use is completely up to you if you want a sticker you can use six you can use eight but i'm going to be using four because i don't want the bust to look too full so i cut this out in four places after cutting this out, the next thing to do is to iron it to the corset cup. So when I want to iron this, I like to first of all iron the first layer, making sure it is flat and well ironed. So after ironing the first layer, I can go ahead and add the remaining theory at a time. So to iron this down, you first of all iron this upper parts all round. So you are going to be shifting the excess to this middle point here. So what I had to do was slash through this middle point to be able to overlap this. I'm able to do this because it's only one layer I'm working with. If I was working with about three layers at a time, I wouldn't be able to just overlap it. I will still show you guys what to do. So you're just going to iron this out and trim off any excess that you have. I noticed that that part was a bit shorter so i had to add to the sides there so you just keep ironing this until the essay is already fused with the corset cup this is what this is looking like after ironing the first layer i'm going to go ahead and add the remaining three layers to the corset cup so i'm just placing the side that have glue on top of each other okay so i'm just placing it this way the side I have glue is facing downwards and I'm going to go ahead and iron this. When ironing, it starts from the upper part. From the upper part, you move to the sides. So all of the excess will be moving towards the center. Okay, so just pay attention to the way I am ironing this. 
if you are watching what i am doing then you will notice that the iron hasn't touched the middle part of the corset yet it's only the upper part and the sides i have ironed that's because i want to make sure that all of the excess has been pushed to the center here so what you're going to do is cut off this excess remember that for the first layer i overlapped it i was able to do that because the fabric wasn't too bulky but now that the fabric is bulky i'll have to cut off the excess and just iron this down okay and you can see that this is looking seamless so another thing you can do is to grab another layer just one layer of fabric and use it to fuse that center point of the corset the part that was cut off so that's if you notice that it is not staying properly like if it is still separating you do that but if not you just ignore you can see that i didn't really do that but i just have to explain it for you guys to see so this is what the both of them is looking like after ironing it i did the other one off camera so i'm going to go ahead and trim off the excess at this point we're almost done but there's still one more important thing that you need to see before you click out of this video okay so remember that i marked out the seam allowance of half of an inch right so what you want to do now is to separate the sd from the corset cup and then cut off the excess around the seam allowance this is to prevent the seam allowance from being bulky after joining okay so i'm just separating the sd all around and cutting this out after separating the sd Another thing you're going to do is to separate the peplum stay from the main fabric and also cut that out. So you just cut it around the seam allowance, making sure it doesn't pass the seam allowance mark that is already there. Okay, so you can see that I'm separating the peplum stay from the main fabric after cutting off the S stay. You don't want any of this passing your seam allowance so that you won't end up having a bulky um edge okay because some people used to be like after sewing this down you top stitch to prevent it from being bulky or use hemming gum but if you remove this from the seam allowance whether you're using wording or you're using sd you're not going to have any of this issue the edge is going to lay very very flat so just take your time trimming off the peplum stay from the corset cup around the seam allowance and also the peplum stay is known as hard stay for you guys i don't know it as peplum stay because i realized that people ask this question a lot in the comments the peplum stay is also known as hard stay okay so you can see that the seam allowance is highlighted now that i've cut off the s stay and the peplum stay and i'm just going to attach it to the corset like this i'm just showing you guys how it is going to look like after attaching okay the tutorial on this is going to be coming out next week so stay tuned it's going to be very juicy i'm going to go ahead and do the same thing for the other part of the cup and that will be it for this video okay that is all i really hope that you guys found this video helpful if you have any questions leave them in the comment section i always respond to all of my comments and if you want more videos like this please subscribe for more I have a tutorial coming out next week on how to sew an inbuilt corset with inseam finishing. So if you're interested, subscribe for that. And also, if you want the link to the pattern of this corset, it will be in the video description. Or you go ahead and check out my playlist, Corset and Bustiers. You'll find the video there. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.